In a previous tutorial, I had covered how we would test hypotheses um, that propose significant relationships between variables and also hypotheses that would propose significant difference um, between groups, um, but only when there were two groups. So we uh, looked at the independent sample status, which was used for um, comparing two groups on a variable of interest uh, to see if there are significant differences. But what if we were to compare more than two groups? Well, if we had to compare more than two groups um, on a variable of interest, then we would need to use a different test. In this instance, we would use the one-way analysis of variance. This procedure is appropriate for comparing more than two groups on a variable of interest. How do we run the one-way analysis of variance? Well, it is still a means difference test. However, now we have more than two means and we will do what we call repeated comparisons to see if any pairs or repeated comparisons of all possible pairs of groups. And we will then try to see if any of those pairs um, differ significantly from each other. So let's say, for example, we want to look at binge drinking. In a previous tutorial, we had created a binge drinking index. Now, what I would like to do is to compare binge drinking based upon religious beliefs. So I'm going to use the religion variable and I'm going to use the binge drinking index variable. So firstly, what we have to do is actually run the one-way analysis of variance. And we do that by going to the analyze, compare means, and instead of the independent sample status which, test, which we have done before, we are going to do a one-way ANOVA. So we go ahead and click one-way ANOVA. So what we will be doing here is for our um, dependent variable, so whatever variable of interest we want to compare people on, that is going to be the dependent variable. So binge drinking index becomes a dependent variable. And our factor is a variable that contains the groups that we would like to compare. So in this instance, we are going to compare religious groups, so religious groups become the factor. We will also ensure that we have selected descriptives, which will give us the um, descriptive statistics. And we will also select homogeneity, which will give us the Levine's test, which we would have already seen in the t-test. We will go ahead and click paste and we will go to our syntax file. In our syntax file we will then select the syntax and we will run that selection. All right, so the results are presented right here. So as we can see, we will see the average consumption based on religious beliefs. So people who have no religious beliefs compared to Catholics, um, Judaism, Islam, Protestantism. And you can see just based on just um, looking at it, we see that um, the higher means in terms of the binge drinking means are among persons who were Catholics and of course Judaism. Okay, um, we see here the Levine's test for homogeneity of variances. We also saw it in the t-test but it was um, a part of the t-test output table. In the one-way analysis of, analysis of variance we see it as a different um, a separate table. However, it is equally important. Now, if we take a look at this, we will see that 
the homogeneity of variance test, the significance is 0 0.075, which is greater than our desired, which is greater than the, 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 the cutoff, which is 0 0.05. Recall from our previous conversations that when the Levine's test is significant, then equal variances are not assumed. However, when the Levine's test is not significant, then equal variances are assumed. Why is this important? Well, in statistical analysis, there are certain basic assumptions that we make when we are going to analyze data. And one of those basic assumptions is equal variances. So we have to know whether or not we are um, meeting that assumption or we are violating that assumption. Because if the assumption of equality of variances is violated, then we have to make some statistical adjustments for that. This becomes important when we start to do our post hoc analysis which i will explain in a moment but first let us take a look at the one-way analysis of variance result which is an f test and we see that the f value here is 8.43 and the significance is 0 0.000 which is less than 0 0.05 so here we would say that there are significant differences in binge drinking when we compare the different religious beliefs. However, what we are not able to tell from look, just from looking at this table is which religious groups differ significantly from which other religious groups. Now, in order to ascertain this, we must do what we call a post hoc analysis. And this is where the multiple comparisons take place. What the F test is, is an omnibus test. The F test will look at all possible pairs and if it finds even one significant difference between two of these religious groups, then it will return a significant finding as it has done here. However, just looking at this, we are not able to say, for example, if it is the persons who are not religious, who um, have significantly more or less or can or engage in significantly more or less binge drinking. We just cannot tell. So what we need to do is to run a post hoc test. Now this is where the test for homogeneity of variances comes in because what happens here is that if equal variances are assumed then we would run the 2K post hoc analysis. So again, if equal variances are assumed, we would run the 2K post hoc analysis. However, if it is that the, home, the Levine's test for homogeneity of variances is significant, we would have to run the games howell post hoc test and it is specified by GH. So how do we get our post hoc tests? Well, we are not able to specify our post hoc test through the PSPP menus. What we have to do is actually specify the test through the syntax editor. How do we do this? Well, we first and foremost, we will copy the first line of the one-way analysis of variant syntax. So we're going to copy that first line and we're going to make some space here because we're going to keep, um, keep up with that whole um, practice that PSPP has of putting our most recent commands at the top. So this is the first line so what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to type in now a second line of analysis um, a second line of command that will 
request the post hoc analysis. So what we will do is slash post hoc equals, and like I said, I would like the 2K full stop. So again, what we will do here is we will copy the first line, paste it, and then just type in slash post hoc equals 2K full stop. We must put a full stop because that is what is going to um, terminate the command. So it will, the, the software knows that when there's a full stop, that means the command is finished. So we're going to go ahead and select that one, that, that command, and we're going to run selection. So what will happen here is that we will get the ANOVA table once again, but this time we will also receive our post hoc analysis. And as I indicated, the post hoc analysis will be able to help us to identify exactly where the differences lie. So if we looked up here again, as we saw, we saw the different groups and their different means. But looking at the means by themselves doesn't say if one mean is significantly different than the other. A test of significance is required for that. And this is what we are doing right here. So let us take a look to see if we can find which group has a significantly different um, binge drinking index mean when compared to another group. So let us look and see how this, this 2K um, procedure works. What happens in the 2K HSD procedure is that it takes each group in turn and makes it group I and all other groups become group J. And then what it does, it is that it's going to subtract the mean of this group from the anchor group here and take what is called a mean difference, which is literally I minus J. So the mean for this group will be taken, the mean for all of the other groups will be taken, and we will subtract each one at a time. So this is what the software is doing. So these are the differences between the means. So I minus J. Then the two key test is run on this mean difference to test whether or not each of those, dif those, those, those pairs, when compared, the difference between them is significant. How do we know which pairs have significant differences between them? Well, all we have to do is pay attention to this column, SIG, and we look for the lines that have a significant result and remember a significant result would be a sig that is less than 0 0.05 and as we see here we if we look through this table we will find that there is only one significant difference and this is when you compare catholics to protestants and we see here that i minus j is equal to 0.46, which means Catholics had the higher mean binge drinking um, scores. So we know then that Catholics um, would be um, would engage in binge drinking at a much high, greater rate than Protestants. So Catholics had a significantly higher binge drinking average score than um protestants you if you were to look through the, the the results you would notice that there is another 0. 0.000 um for a, a significant alpha value however we would see that it is literally the same as this one up here it's just that this one is a positive value and this one down here is a negative value this is because in doing the multiple comparisons, the mean difference is taken 
of all possible pairs, which means that each group becomes group one or, or I, group I, and then all other groups are subtracted, which means each comparison is done twice. One where um, one of the pair, one, one of the members of the pair is group I, and another time when the, the, the other member is going to be group J. So look at this. None compared to Catholics. Here you have Catholic compared to none. Negative point two nine point two nine. So it's literally just the inverse, right? Negative value, positive value. Negative value, positive value. Negative value or positive value, negative value. Positive value, negative value. And so you do not need to report two significant results because the truth is they're both speaking to the same pair. And so we would indicate that um, based on this result, we see where only one group had significantly um, different binge drinking um, averages when compared to the others. We saw Catholics having significantly higher binge drinking average when compared to Protestants. But all the other groups, even though there were minor differences in their average binge drinking index scores, the truth is those minor differences were not large enough to be considered significant. So this is how we would um, not just run the one-way ANOVA, but also generate the post hoc analysis. Bear in mind, again, that the test of homogeneity of variances is what would tell you post hoc analysis to run. In the case of a significant Levine's test in the ANOVA procedure, we would run the games howell post hoc analysis. However, if it is that the Levine statistic is not significant, we will run the two key post hoc analysis. Also bear in mind that you have to actually manually run the post hoc analysis through the syntax and that is done by copying the first line of the ANOVA command and then actually writing in the post hoc command. Now if you were going to run the games howell test what you would do here is again copy the first line make some space paste and then and I'm tab slash post hoc equals GH. So GH is the abbreviation for the gains I will test. And let us just see what would happen if we did that. Run selection. As you can see, the games I will test run. Now, which I want you guys to, to note here that even though equal variances are assumed, right? The, proceed, the software is not going to stop you from running the wrong test. You have to know which post hoc analysis to run. So again, significant living statistic. Run games, how will post hoc analysis? Not significant living statistic. Run two key post hoc analysis. That concludes our tutorial on the one-way analysis of variance and its accompanying post-hoc analysis.